I never used it at all. Well, it was really getting run down. Very, very sad to see it like that. It was a wreck. It was so cold and the floorboards were all in ruin. The loo and things like that was diabolical. And it really was becoming, especially for elderly people, it was just becoming too bad to use. The walls were in a disgusting state. I mean, every, every part of it, it just was a mess. Derelict looking building with facilities that were rather antiquated. And over a period of time, it became um, this wonderful building that it is now. And it is a much used focal point of the village. There have been campaigns going on for the past 15 years or so oh, yes. to try to raise money from various sources to get the hall renovated. This had been uh, very much led by the committee at the time and who did um, a lottery which was successful in raising the profile of the to a certain extent, and bringing in a regular income. So it was a combination of grants, donations, and all sorts of fundraising events, which of course we had to do to show that we really wanted the hall to uh, succeed. And then that's when we began to get the big grants and the, the lottery, the HLF grant in particular. And that was um, very much down to the fact that the history group had joined forces with them and the Heritage got interested in the idea of, uh, of developing the hall when they knew that um, there would be an archive centre set up within the building. The walls inside everything was renovated and replastered and in the main hall. The ceiling was redone so there's, there's been it was really too exactly. much to think about. It was huge, huge. It was massive really. Mm -hmm. I've always um, been very fond of the village and I've always felt that we needed more activity um, during the daytime for people in Milo. So we started the lunch club just to see if it would get off the ground. The first day we all stood there and thought well one person is coming and it just came off the ground and we've now, I think our record is 49. It's certainly the heart of the village where everyone um, can come and have lunch and it really is good. A social event. I mean, like I said, it's a social event. It's and it's great fun. You get at least it gets us out for starters. You know, every Tuesday on Thursday. I mean, I didn't know anybody here, although I've lived here for about 20 years. I didn't know anybody. They all know me now, though, and that's great. In Hall is a tremendous asset to this little community. So many people live here and need a centre. And it's, it, it's such a beautiful place now. It's become the focal point of this village. It's a place where people can meet. It's a place where we have luncheon club and we also have private functions, film shows, keep fit, dancing. There's all sorts of facilities. So it is very much a focal point for this village. Cornwall Rural Community Council has managed the Community Buildings Advisory Service for um, over 60 years now. And that's mainly delivered in three ways. There's the, firstly, it's the governance issues around um, the governing document, the legal structure of the organisation, and the uh, interpretation of existing trustees. The second section of that would be operational practices. So that's like your day-to-day -day issues around licensing, whether for alcohol or for any kind of premises license, and the health and safety issues, the fire safety issues. There's a whole range of common issues that community buildings face that we provide support and resources to help them through that. And then thirdly, the, the final section is around project development and funding. And that's, that's been helping groups to identify the needs of the community that they're serving and to put that together into a project to improve the community building and then to assist with funding applications. What we're finding now though is um, a change in the way that the, the project has been delivered and we're kind of just coming to the end of the 60 year run where we have delivered it in this way. Um, and what we're finding is that the grant funding to support this, this service is um, changing a lot and we need to kind of move it into the um, 21st century really and think about how it can generate its own income to be financially sustainable. Any community building committee that's looking to do a project as large as this needs to get the community involved and they need to consult with them to to really show that they are um, looking to meet their needs 
as that is the role of their commu community building that they're volunteers for. Then when they've got that uh, information together, they're in a better position to actually um, plan a project which is going to improve the hall and it'll be appropriate for funders then as well. We've got to have a big team of very dedicated people over many, many years. Um, and I think it's not a project that you take on lightly, but it's very, very worthwhile if it succeeds. And now there's bingo, there's films, there's lunch club, there's um, computer courses. There's something for everybody and it's brought people together. Mm -hmm.